Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, getting Eclipse set up as a development environment for Java. This kind of assumes you've already done some Java programming and now you're interested in setting up this particular IDE. And so we're going to just take a look. You're going to want to go to Eclipse.org, which is where you can find the, the latest download of Eclipse. And find the one for your machine. I'm going to look for the one for my Windows machine. Okay, so we've got it downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and install it. Let's take a look at, see if there's any options we need to worry about. Don't think we need to choose many um, particular options. Usually the defaults should work pretty well. Okay, and I've, I've got these options for which kind of IDE I want. I'm specifically working in Java, and we do not want the enterprise one for what we're doing. We're just going to go for the Eclipse IDE for Java developers and I will ask it to create a desktop shortcut and a start menu entry, and let's go through and install this. Uh, <clears throat> it'll also ask which version of Java virtual machine do you want to use for running your code. I'm just going to go with whatever the latest is that it suggests, that should be fine. Okay, and while this is installing, I'm going to set up a folder on my desktop. This is going to be a place for my Java code. Uh, for everything that I do in Eclipse, I'd like to identify a folder, and you'll see why here in a second. You could put this wherever you want, but it's useful to have in mind where you would like all of your projects to go, and this will become known as your uh, workspace folder. So let me create a new folder on my desktop, and I'll just call it uh, Java Programming. Okay, I see that Eclipse has finished up with its installation, and I'm just going to go ahead and launch. It's also put this on my desktop, so in the future I could just launch this way. I'll go ahead and launch, and I no longer need the installer. I'll go ahead and delete that. And I can see I've got the 2023 December version of Eclipse, which was the latest one I was able to download. Okay, so the first thing that happens when, when you open Eclipse for the first time is it's going to ask you to identify where is the workspace that you want to work from. And I specifically want to use this Java programming folder here, which is currently, just so you can see, this is currently empty. So you can see I've got nothing in here, and I'm going to go ahead and close that, and I'll pop it open here again in a second. But you can browse. I'm going to go ahead and browse to that folder. And so it's on my desktop, and it is the Java programming folder. So I'm just clicking on it and saying select folder. And I can see that it is now using my Java programming folder as the workspace. I would rather not change my workspace at any time because all of my projects are going to go into this folder. So I'd rather not be asked each time. So I'm going to check the box that says use the default and don't ask again. If I decide later that I want to change my workspace, Eclipse gives, gives me a way to do that. So I'm launching Eclipse for the very first time, and it's going to lay out my screen in a kind of a default way that would be useful to most general uh, Java programmers. But there's a lot of room in here for customization, and we'll take a look at that once this opens up. Okay, so we see that Eclipse has finished starting up, and it presents me with a lot of options that I generally, generally don't go through. It's got some things here that will create my own Hello World application, but I'd like to do that from scratch just to show you what's going on. Um, a lot of options here that, honestly, I never look at. I'm just going to... Um, I, I don't want this to show up next time. And when I look down here, it says, always show welcome at startup. I am not going to check that box. I don't need to see, see that. So I'm going to go ahead and click hide and not worry about that again. So now this is my Java uh, layout, my Eclipse layout for Java programming. And um, there's a lot of tabs here that I'm generally not going to be using for the coding that I'm doing and I will show you how to rearrange things. You can decide how to use your screen real estate here by moving things around. We'll look at that in a second. I do want to show you in case you wanted to switch your workspace, like if you did have a personal one and a work one, you can come down here and choose another workspace. And when you do that, if you choose a different workspace, Eclipse will actually completely quit 
and then restart again in the new selected workspace. So not going to do that, but it is there if that's what you want to do. So what I would really like to do is to create a new project. And you can see there's some shortcuts here uh, that will let me do that. I could start up here also and say new Java project. So I'll go ahead and do that. That's probably what you'll do most of the time. And that starts up and it asks for a project name. This is not the name of, of your source code files. It's just give it a useful name. Um, I could call this first Java application or something like that. And it will ask you a, a number of questions about options that you want. Often the defaults are just fine. You can kind of see here that what's happening is it's storing in my Java programming folder a folder named first Java application for this particular project. So I've got a workspace, and then within that workspace, I can have multiple projects. And within each project, I can have multiple source code files and other kinds of files. It asks what version of Java, excuse me, what version of Java I want to use for um, running my code, and I'll just go with the default of Java 17. It asks, do I want to create separate folders for my source code and my class files? And I do. It's useful to keep those two separated. It's also going to ask, and we're not going to be doing this in this class that I'm going to be teaching, but it asks if I want to create a module info.java file, and I do not. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out of there. And we can click next. I don't think there's anything we're going to do on the next screen. And if not, we could have just clicked finish. But if I look on the next screen, let's see what options it gives me. Um, yeah, it's asking me some questions about libraries and additional source code and things like that. I'm good with all these options, so I'm just going to click finish. I can see on the left-hand side of my screen under Package Explorer, I can see that I've now got this folder called First Java Application. I can verify this on my desktop by looking in that folder where I created my workspace. Here's my Java programming folder. And now when I go in here, you'll see that I have my first Java application folder as well. And when I go into there, you can see that I have a folder for my source code, a folder where my .class files will go, and then some other things that uh, Eclipse needs in order to kind of manage your project. Also, if I back out a little, this, the metadata folder, is an important folder for Eclipse to just know how the how Eclipse should be configured. It's not about any particular application, but it's really about Eclipse in general. So we've got, there is my uh, Java programming is my workspace. First Java application is a folder in my workspace. And then within that, I will end up with uh, source files and dot class files. So let's go ahead and create our first um, wrong tab. Our first, I'm looking for Eclipse, uh, our first source code file. So um, I'm going to, let's just do a simple hello world application. I'm going to click on source and right click on that and say that I would like to add a new class. And it's going to ask me for the name of a class. Now, I'm going to here here's where it matters more what we call it. The project was called First Java Application. There's no real rules for naming projects, but remember that if you're naming a Java class, typically we're going to want to name it with an uppercase letter as our first letter because it's a class name with no spaces at all. The no spaces is a rule and the capital letters are a guideline. And asks me some options here. It's going to say things like the use of the default package is discouraged. And for right now, for most of what we're going to do, we are going to use the default package. So even though it's discouraged, I'm going to encourage you to use it if you're doing it for my class. But if, if you were doing something else, you would change the package. Don't change the package for what we're doing. The only other option here I'm going to change is that I am going to put a um, checkbox in the public static void main string args so that I don't have to type it myself. So I'm going to click finish. And then what I get here, and let me enlarge the text a little bit. 
what I get here is public class hello world. And there is the main method because I check that box. And then a to do, don't leave these to do's behind in your code. Once you have written some code, then this is a good time for you to um, get rid of the comments. And I just want to do a system.out.println hello world and verify that everything is working the way that it should. And so I look and there's it's not showing me any errors. Notice if I left this off, it would indicate that I have an error here. I can hover over errors and it will tell me what the error is. It will also keep track of problems in my code. Um, I can show you that later if it comes up. And um, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and run my code. And when I choose to run it, it's going to automatically compile my code for me and then run my code. And so I'll go ahead and save this just to show you this. But um, when I go ahead and take a look at my source folder, I will see that hello world.java is in there. This is the file I'm currently editing. And when I look in the bin folder, you can see that I already. <laughs> This is true. Even though I have not clicked run, I have not clicked compile, Eclipse is actually compiling my code for me as I go. It is generating a new, new uh, dot class file as I go, which can be really convenient. I'll go ahead and run this now. And I can see the output down here in the console. So let's see what would happen if I had something incorrect in my code. How about something like that? Not that. Just want to change my L in print line to an uppercase L. And again, it's underlining it in red, I believe. Now, I thought maybe it would show it to me under problems, but um, the editor itself will underline things for you if they are in error. Last thing I want to show you is that um, the layout of your screen is really kind of up to you. Um, you can make all sorts of modifications to your layout. Up here in the upper right hand corner, you can see that it says here uh, Java if I hover over it. This is referring to what the layout is or how my environment is set up. And what that refers to are all these tabs that you see here. Uh, which tabs do you want open? And let's say you accidentally go in and start moving things around in ways that you didn't expect. Like maybe you, you put something here and you didn't really mean to, and you accidentally close your package explorer, and maybe you dragged your source code file down here and you just made a mess of things. You can reset uh, your it's your perspective. You can reset your perspective by going to the upper right hand corner, right clicking, and choosing reset. And I'm going to choose reset perspective. And um, asks if I want to save my code. Sure. And you can see that it has put everything back where I want. It's it didn't show me my source code file again, but my source code is right here. But you can see that it put all the tabs back in place where they were before and any other settings that are the default settings. But the truth is, I don't really use the task list for what I'm going to be doing, and I'm not going to use the outline all that much. And so I want to get those off of there. And maybe I would like this to take up a little less space and maybe this part down here to take up a bit more space. Once I find a layout that I really like, I can actually save that and uh, give it a useful name. So I can have the, the default Java perspective, but I can also have a perspective that I have customized the way that I want. And I'll go back up to the upper right hand corner and right click and choose Save As, and it will allow me to save this, uh, let's call this Java norm style, and save it. So now that I've created my own perspective, I can come over here and click on next to the J and see that I've got Java default and I've got Java norm style and I can switch between them. I also have one that I'll use whenever I'm debugging that is the debug perspective. But Java default would take me back to the one I started with. On the other hand, if I choose Java 
norm style, I will get the one that I customize the way that I like. So uh, that's about it. That should give you enough to get started. And uh, happy programming.